Okay. Uh, <clears throat> welcome to the course module, Advanced Financial Accounting and Reporting, offered by the Department of Accounting for the second semester, 2021. Already, uh, you have been enrolled to the accounting program, accounting degree program, so that um, most of the subjects designed for the degree have um, accounting uh, the flavor apart from other additional subjects. Due to the prevailing condition of the country, as of now, it's not certain whether we will be able to, or we will be able to have physical classes for sure, but we do not know when some indications um, and some statements have been made by UGC chairman. And it looks like we would be able to have physical classes soon. Nevertheless, we will continue in um, continue with online teaching learning platforms until such thing happens. Even though there are lots of um, constraints and hiccups uh, which are inevitable in online teaching, we have to continue with that, no options. In a way, this is not really online teaching, but we use online platforms for discussions. Effectiveness is compromised, can't help. We have to do it. So no matter how big the class size is, you are encouraged to ask questions. I prefer if you ask questions uh, verbally by unmuting your mic, but in any case, if you have a doubt, you uh, like maybe feel of not asking, you can use the chat box, no problem. Um, <clears throat> am I audible enough to you? Hello? Am I audible enough to you? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think my screen slideshow is also seen. Visible to you properly. Yeah due to like prevailing weather condition and all one student has just mentioned that. So this online connection is not that strong, very poor internet connections. And we have difficulties of listening, even from both ends, even from my end, if it's not clear, that is the word is being recorded. And even if you later listen, you may not be, um, able to get the best out of it, but can't help for the time being, we need to continue like this. So let me explain the basic things. So introduction to this particular course. So from uh, for this semester, I'm the coordinator of this course. Um, I'm Anil Lantapanayandu, attached to the Department of Accounting, all the lecturers, uh, from the Department of Accounting. Uh, my background is um, basically accounting and finance. Fellow member of CM is uh, Sri Lanka, CA Sri Lanka, and an associate member of uh, CPA Australia. Um, in addition to my academic and professional, I engage in some social activities as well. So they, they are connected uh, with common politics also where I work to national intellectuals organizations to, um, and, um, to impart with knowledge and to have public discourses about how best um, we can develop alternative economic policies 
for the country and uh, i'm working on that as well then uh, professor dayanand is also a full time lecturer attached to the department and he is also a fellow member of uh, ca sri lanka and uh, cma sri lanka and then uh, we have uh, atrang sandarwan uh, yeah you must be knowing him well he has been teaching uh, several subjects this subject also collective vision teach um, he is also a member of uh, sri lanka and has a uh, lot of experience in teaching and from professional background likewise uh, we have uh, the uh, recently class of students now they are, they are also members of our department dumido uh, janita ratna and gayant dumido and gayant will conduct tutorials for you um, <clears throat> the communication platform in addition to online teaching and discussion even if you have physical lectures the main mode of communication would be would be lms your learning um, management system so visit uh, lms as of now few things have been uploaded general instructions um, schedule uh, tutorial schedule your online quiz schedule and some references to accounting standards and today's materials and tomorrow's material i will explain now lectures will continue um, but feel free to visit lms often this is the um, the content summary content summary this time we will be having lectures only for 12 weeks not for 15 um due to the pandemic situation but there will be 24 um sessions 12 weeks but 24 sessions two hour each so thereby it covers almost 48 um first one is the basic um, reporting environment of course you have uh, fair knowledge about this reporting environment you have learned these things at advanced level also to some extent by referring to the conceptual framework for financial reporting then again the first year subject that is financial accounting subject again you learn somewhat um, pertain into the financial reporting environment the same thing conceptual framework here we again uh, discuss about the conceptual framework and other reporting environment requirements um, with little bit more depth than that you had um, the exposure previously um then intangible assets um that is a new area then accounting for income tax you know that being a limited liability company being a legal person has to pay income tax so it's a legal person so therefore legal person every legal person should pay tax so companies have to pay tax but when the tax liability is computed it's not that easy complications may arise due to uh, the nature of the expenses and the timing of expenses rules and regulations pertaining to the inland revenue department inland revenue act and accounting rules and regulations and accounting standards which have been which are inclu in, um, included in the accounting and auditing standard act two different types of act have two different provisions pertaining to the nature and the timing as a result tax liability varies so that we need to take them into account and disclose all the relevant information because you know that we will be discussing under the conceptual framework 
relevance of information really, really matters when we make reporting. So that we need to bring about the impact of all those things into the reporting. That is why accounting for income tax or the company income tax uh, is important. Then the business combination is also discussed. Um, simple idea is since a limited liability company, of course, that is a legal person, that legal person can have multiple legal persons as their investments. In other words, legal company can be uh, an investor or shareholder of another company. So likewise, it can have larger groups. Then the economic substance would vary when a legal person or limited liability company um, goes on bringing more and more companies into its umbrella what we call normally a group of the car, I mean, group of companies. But each and every company within a given set of setup or a group has its own accounting identity, separate identity, legal identity. Therefore, you can report, assume that there is a group, say, John Kales, assume that there are 200 companies you can all these companies will have to report. Therefore, there will be 200 reportings, individual reportings. Apart from this individual company reporting, accounting standards require the parent company later. So you already have heard about these things within the group whoever who holds the ultimate ownership of other companies is called the ultimate parent. So therefore that ultimate parent should prepare consolidated financial statements in addition to its individual separate financial statements. But the preparation of consolidated financial statements um, will be difficult why there is no such separate legal person. Assume that there are, uh, as in my example, 200 companies are there. Assume, this is an assumption. I don't know the exact number. 200 companies are there in John Keel's group. Therefore, 200 different persons are their legal persons. But whatever, there may be so many parents, ultimate parents would be there, not only one. Assume that one particular company in the leisure sector, uh, the parent company prepares its own financial statement, separate financial statements and the group. But for the group, you have numbers, but there is no registered incorporated entity. Then the group accounts really show only the economic substance as a whole, assuming that if all the entities within the group were a single entity. So that we, so lots of weightage is there in this advanced financial accounting and reporting subject towards this combination. Because combinations, the economic impact of these combinations is huge. Sometimes some of the things we do not know what they have done, maybe good things, maybe bad things as highlighted in Pandora papers recently, hmm? uh, which were released by ICIJ, that is International Consortium for uh, Investigative Journalists. They collected lots of information through their sources and finally were able to release a list of 330 key figures, including the rulers of some countries, that is politicians and politically exposed people, uh, celebrities, business people, and even well-known um, uh, um, uh, racketeers, groups everywhere, right? Maybe four stars. So 330, including two Sri Lankan names as well. So finally, they are individual. But if you read these 
pandora papers look into this information how these individual have managed to hide their wealth income wealth and income how it would be a puzzle so no individual has gone and hidden or kept their wealth somewhere else in their own name they have used the names of not names of company actually they have used these avenues companies what we call if you form a company to do a specific purpose like this we call shell company shell company doesn't do any physical economic activity you they take your money and do this kind of uh, uh, gimmicks and likewise you have one company that company invest another company investor would be uh, another trustee so today or maybe yesterday there was a news article um, agreement was signed between uh, sri lanka um, the national uh, fertilizer uh, company national fertilizer company and one chinese or oh no maybe different come i can't remember the country in the company but the, the the suspicion that i have the other party is not a limited liability company i mean but it's a legal person it is a venture capitalist venture capitalist we do not know who have given them money even black money uh, swindle money we do not know unless you check because you have the connection with that particular uh, venture capitalist so you don't have rights of just taking their owners you take okay that venture capitalist is legally incorporated you do the businesses then you allow without knowingly sometimes to have these uh, socially unaccepted um, and so socially controversial things through this mechanism simply what i just want to tell you that since you learn accounting and finance especially in advanced financial accounting and reporting we talk about entities those entities mainly we refer to legal persons these legal persons could be either good or bad it it is like a double edged sword so got to be very very careful because sometimes once you pass out from the university become a professional and working to uh, institutions like this maybe public private and all those things you also would be exposed to these kind of things you sometimes you also will have to uh, work according to their the like uh, the wishes and whims simply disregarding professionalism but mind that uh, being a professional or responsible citizen accountable citizen um, always you need to think of not the personal interest but the public interest uh, yes someone has asked through paper companies yes you are right paper companies are paper in the same incorporated um just they exist um nominally right direct so no activities are there sometimes there is no physical location right some places locations are there but there are no any other uh, physical activities other than taking money from you and investing somewhere there and transferring here and there shell companies sometimes you may need shell companies to facilitate some transactions also that's like every if you take all those things if you want you can use it for uh, good purposes or bad purposes shell company can be used to increase the efficiency right so you engage in manufacturing and it's difficult for you to connect your operations to clientele and all then you better form different shell companies and assign you do this you do this and all those things so those actions are really creating value for the company for the group so there is nothing wrong but if you create another company shell company take contracts or take money and do that and this it's really um, just swindling funds you earn lots of money here in sri lanka also there are lots of um, uh, shell companies or the paper companies like this to take uh, government contracts so i don't know whether you guys saw the news um maybe one week ago uh, one parliamentarian um, revealed the fact that uh, for the importation of fertilizer nowadays we talk about this nano fertilizer nitrogen uh, fertilizer 
how do you import when importation takes place for the government that is what we call public procurement there is a procedure it has to be uh, i mean tender should be called openly and it should be transparent equal opportunity should be there likewise um, otherwise lots of opportunity like rooms would be created for corruption do not know what has really happened but it is a fact i checked it with the central bank as well it is a fact that uh, that huge amount of money dollars 1.2 million something has been in foreign currencies has been transferred from the central bank central bank has given it as a facility to the peop uh, people's bank people's bank has transferred it to a branch in town hall and that particular branch has deposited the same as a loan to or as a payment to that particular company the problem is that company is said to be still we need to check said to be incorporated within a short period of time couple day couple of days ago then lots of um, susceptibility is created oh well how well, has something something fishy is there maybe so you know sri lanka it's a, it has become a paradise for corruption but you you guys be must be in touch with these things otherwise this learning will not be useful okay that that is the purpose of business combination uh, basic things would be discussed then the preparation of consolidated consolidated finances uh, statements consolidation process will be discussed and some specific um, aspects implications in the process of consolidation will also be discussed such as intercompany transactions cross holdings some funny things are there uh, assume that there are three companies a b c it is more logical and understood if i say that a company owns 80% of equity in b b company owns 50% of c that's all right because you understand it goes in a hier hierarchical manner so b and c become subsidiaries of a b becomes a subsidiary of a something like c becomes subsidiary of b finally b and c become subsidiaries of a that's all right but again c company may have bought shares from b and shares from a as well that is what we call cross holding it's really complicated when you prepare i um, to eliminate all those things uh, when we prepare consolidated financial statements we look um, into those areas as well um non controlling interest is another area you would be learning uh, that part of the equity which is held by out outsiders outsiders in the sense which is held by shareholders not within the group we need to know when we take entire group how much is owned by the owners or shareholders within the group and outside the group um then the involvement of foreign currency and need for translation will be discussed nowadays you know um, foreign currency or foreign exchange for sri lanka has become a vital variable because uh, the amount of foreign exchange that we have as a country is called reserves official reserves why do you want it without foreign reserves you can't import goods without uh, reserves you can't repay your loans so in order to get the things that you want from the world and to settle your liabilities you need foreign reserves but nowadays it is the reserve is being depleting and lots of discussions are there in the society as well um the same situation may be faced by entities as well if they import some materials from other countries they need to find for in exchange if they want some risk, uh, imports may have been restricted assume that that is not restricted you can import in order to import them even though you have money in rupees you go to the bank and ask please 
give me one million dollars, I want to import these raw materials to manufacture this. In order for the bank to give you one million or facilitate you to have one million US dollars, bank should have dollars. If the bank does not have dollars or bank does not have any means or source of getting dollars soon, bank, would, bank not, is not in a position to give you dollars. So that, that is the issue uh, we are facing as of now. Mm, therefore, we will be discussing about uh, these issues in general, uh, the involvement of foreign currencies pertaining to limited liability companies, its impact. And if you have recorded some transactions in foreign currencies or whatever the currencies, so whenever the transactions are recorded or in, uh, uh, involved with the different currencies for the reporting purposes, you need to bring all those things into one currency. That is called translation process. Translation process. Then we will be talking about um, accounting for investment in associate. That is, of course, another part of the consolidation, but different aspect. We'll see whether it could be taken up with the consolidation or separately told. So finally, um, insolvency and liquidation. Sometimes um, it may look like, oh, that, that's not that popular. Hmm? We, no one talks about liquidation and insolvencies of corporations. Most of the time we think of the going concern. Then why do we need to learn about insolvency or liquidation? In fact, there are lots of cases of insolvencies, liquidations due to economic um, reasons. We can't simply um, ignore the fact that there will not be liquidation. So liquidations are coming. And liquidation becomes a separate practice. Even. If you just um, check the situation in UK and other developed countries, so liquidation process is also a separate profession. Um, it has developed up to that level. So it is good for you to learn it, especially when you apply for jobs or any other, so no matter whether you apply for jobs or not, but so that exposure is important. So this is the coverage of our course. Timetable goes like this. You have two lectures per week, every week, Wednesdays and Thursdays, three to five. Actually two hours have been allocated, but effectively we want to take one and a half hours or maybe one hour and 40 minutes, something. Not exactly two hours, but you will be having some other lectures as well. Um, so therefore, we would not take uh, go up to five. Thursday, one to three p.m. So that would be a bit difficult time after lunch. You guys may fall sleepy, especially when we have online lectures. If there is no interaction, yes, you may fall asleep. But in the classrooms, we have an opportunity, we have a chance of asking questions. This course has a tutorial session as well. For each and every topic that we discuss in the lectures will be discussed in the tutorial sessions. However, this time tutorials will start from the third week onward. Here, the reference to holes is given only in case if the university will be reopened and we are allowed to have physical classes. Uh, for the tutorials, schedule has been already uploaded into the system, but for your benefit, I can show you the schedule. Is the tutorial schedule? Do you see it or not? Do you see the tutorial schedule? Uh, maybe I have just shared on it. Share the screen then. Now. Is it seen now? 
Yes, sir. All right. Uh, need not to go through each and every detail. Like you would be having uh, first two weeks, no tutorial. Then from 9th November, uh, then you have plenty of time to uh, prepare yourself. Chapter 1, Chapter 15 would be discussed. So likewise, all the details are there. So this is the chapter reference. So where you can access to um, the material that reference is there. You better read and do the exercises before attending tutorials. Otherwise, there is no use. If you just go and sit or just listen uh, during the tutorial session, if you have not attempted, no way, you can't grasp. Um, it will continue for 12 weeks until 18th January. Then I would like to show you, okay, Little bit about assessment for tutorials, 10% as of now, this is how it has been designed. Maybe we'll see when the classes continue, we'll see whether we need kind of revisions or modification to this. As of now, 10% for tutor tutorials and online quizzes 20 and the final examination carries 70%. Tutorials, um, it depends how you react, engage, and attempt um, to questions, your preparedness, really your contribution to tutorial classes will give you some marks. We'll discuss, already we have discussed, and we have developed some criteria based on that marks would be given. Then it's your uh, responsibility to obtain those marks. Online quizzes, uh, there would be, we plan to have um, either 12 or 13, maybe 12 quizzes of which 10 best quizzes would be taken. So you have leverage of two bad quizzes. So even if you will not be able to attend all the quizzes, still you are safe as long as you do 10 quizzes, I mean, it's out of your best, so that, that's pretty much enough. Nothing to worry in case if something goes wrong, you have a leverage of two classes. And each quiz includes 10 to 20 MCQs. We'll try to reduce the number of quizzes, I mean, sorry, questions included in the quiz. But uh, since that is online, we need not to worry. You have uh, given time, I mean, adequate time period has been given. Then final examination, those questions will not be uh, stereotype questions which would assess your cognitive power. No, we would assess your ability of understanding this reporting setup and uh, how that is applied in a practical situation, maybe referring to some cases, incidences, something like that. Mainly we try to focus on practical situations. What is your responsibility? How can you be successful in this course? Of course, this is open course, I mean, Everyone, whoever who follows instruction properly, learns accordingly, collect extra information and come out or demonstrate your competencies in a very logical manner, rational manner. Of course, everyone would be able to get a good pass, good in the sense, not simple COB distinction. A pass can be easily obtained but it depends on you. Um, that is why we emphasize this idea, understand the concepts so rather than memorizing. Don't go for memorization. That cognitive abilities will not be tested. That is the reason. Then revise previous materials and put more effort 
early in the session so like basic basic idea is it is understood you guys know these things you will not be able to successfully in your quizzes with a good grade unless you put an adequate effort on it simple as that that is from your side what i just explain are your contribution what you are supposed to do if you do what you are supposed to do in a proper manner efficient manner actually it would really really serve to meet our expectation from our side also we expect something from you that means always better attend lectures tutorials and workshops so we designed in the past but this time uh, possibilities of having a workshop as of now we have not thought uh, in case it's going to be decided that would be notified in lms then contribute and practice where can you do this you can contribute during um, tutorials tutorials or maybe outside the tutorial where you have to learn certain things by yourself what you call self learn during the self learning you can do something like that and feedback is also needed uh, that's why i ask at the beginning you better feel free to ask questions raise points better not to be passive listeners you should be active listeners active participants not passive listeners so stop me at any point in time if you do not understand anything just ask clear it lots of jargons are there in accounting some of the concepts if a layman reads oh my goodness they may not understand therefore your feedback really matters um your feedback is obtained not for any other purposes but for the purpose of improving the quality of teaching learning process in the university in general but particular in particular but in general so that is a contribution for the entire education system in the country right now you can ask um any question question if you have any yeah it's your time we'll take um now 348 until 4 o'clock we can discuss then you can raise your hand ask questions or otherwise you can type your questions in the chat Yeah, we have ten minutes for that. Please feel free to do so. thank you very much so i don't know whether uh, i stopped the recording or what happened previous session anyway we'll see what has happened i'm not sure whether it was the previous one was recorded now this one is being recorded uh, you can see it is being recorded okay thank you always um uh, be in touch and just observe things if something goes wrong we need to rectify lots of technical issues may come across okay now on notes the boring stuff mm -hmm. you guys mentioned that online lecturing is boring so now i'm going to talk about boring stuff so ask questions 
okay the previous one i stopped then that's good uh, that must be there i will upload all those things later so please feel free to ask questions to keep the class alive vibrant and interactive financial reporting environment actually reporting is done within an environment regulatory framework for the presentation and uh, preparation and presentation of financial statement actually this is the framework for simply speaking financial reporting presentation and preparation and presentation means reporting reporting um okay before look, looking at the learning outcomes reporting what is the real meaning of reporting why do we need reporting and why not something else when you learn mathematics do you report you compute when you learn finance do you report sometimes report preparations that is writing not reporting you write a report is different from reporting do you have some idea about the word reporting is it the same thing like uh, writing a report or preparing something what what's the real meaning of this reporting have you ever questioned this yeah what do you think yeah you you can type uh, in the box communicating information to users then why don't we call it as just communication dissemination of information yeah for taking decisions reporting should be necessary yes of course why aha uh -huh. then someone says legal requirement what is the legal requirement does the law say or require you to report yeah it is legal requirement is there required by law to report to who why is it reporting yes of course reporting based on standard do we make reports mm -hmm. yes yes what else why specifically this word reporting use because all these things what you mentioned about um, legal requirement uh, and specified by the law of uh, the country that is the accounting standards then we could have said that okay it is we are going to learn about the preparation of financial statements and making them available for users for decision making something like that. Hmm. okay now i got some points because of agency theory is it uh, yeah agency theory connected to conflicts agency conflicts information needs transparency you see now accountability so many aspects are coming into this scene therefore it is true that what you say are connected to this process some more other ways it's connected but you must learn and know the meaning of reporting why it is mandatory required why it has been compulsory by the law to do so um no matter what you do in the process the specific word reporting is used recall the yeah, even consistency company that the consistency in preparing financial statements and all those things. so whatever the elements or the principles in accounting are seen in the reporting process reporting is something you are supposed to do i mean it's a required thing that is why you have to report if you do not report you violate something recall how many times have you reported to the principal when you going to school how many times i i am sure that uh, most of you guys especially boys may not be girls often but 
at least you may have reported to the principal. You may have reported to the teacher. If you work in the audit firms, you may report to the um, partner. It's required. Why do you have to report? To clarify certain things. There are, there could be issues. There would be um, ambiguities between those two parties. Yeah, even accountability issues. And suppose that um, principal got some news that you have uh, one student has hit another one, made an injury, then you have to report to the principal. And that is a physical reporting. How you behaved in a way um, during your school time, you have been admitted to school, your parents have admitted you to the school, but the parents do not know what's really going on during the school time. Whose responsibility is there to take care of you is vested with the principal and teachers, maybe some other administrative staff. Then parents, why parents enrolled or admit you to school with a particular purpose? of giving you a kind of education. They do not know whether you have learned or not. You see, each word has a meaning. Actually, these, if you question about these definitions, actually you are learning a lot. Suppose that when you go to an interview, sometimes I do not know, some people may ask, if interviewer ask you, where did you learn? Or oh, where did you go like um, to school? Which word is used? Where did you go to school? Or oh, in which school did you learn? What would be the most probable question? Hmm? What do you think? Uh, so is the question clear to you? What do you do during the school time? Which school did you go to? Right? Is that the question? Like for example, yeah, everyone. Which school did you go to? Oh. Which school? Okay, instead of having a poll, I'll just type here. Which school did you learn? One or two. Which question would be the probable question that someone asked? And which question would be the most correct question? Yes? First one or the second one? Ah. I'm sorry that I have just posted it to someone else. 19621. It should be to everyone. Number one, where did you go? Oh, number two, did you learn? Yes? What's your response? One or two? Second one. Are you sure? Yeah, technically, yes, um, you may say that too. Why? because the purpose of going to school is learning. That is why you say that, oh, yes, yes. So in which school did you learn? But mind that if someone asks 
asks that question that question is technically wrong why so there is no assurance that you have learned how do we know only thing what we know that you have gone to a school that is why when we talk in the general conversation we never say like sometimes you may say it, but it is improper if you say that i learn in that school no you have to say that i went to that school i went to that school <laughs> so now you now you can think and recall ah yes 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 there is a difference what is seen what is true what is known to everyone is the fact that you went to the school <laughs> after going to the school we did not know whether you learn or not you have <laughs> wasted your time who knows even though the school is meant uh, for you to learn there there is no assurance that is the reason why there is another definition about this reporting comes so that school prepares a special report card hmm? your book report how do you call this is school report or report card because parents do not know what you have done they know that you went to the school do not know whether you learn therefore parents want to know your performance yeah student record book so now you can understand why student record book is needed it is a reporting principal and teachers report you about your performance back to your parents again that agency relationship so think of it yeah sometimes your progress report the same principle is applied for limited liability companies not for other company other organization like sole proprietor partnerships you can follow the same procedure of preparing financial statements there is no such a reporting requirement because you are the one who uh, uh, do like uh, if it's a sole proprietorship one who does it partnership partners get together do the business they know what you are doing then you re- no, there is no point of reporting to yourself you prepare something and reports are there reports are different from reporting huh? reporting can be done in many ways reports are tangible something which contain information should not be confused reporting with reports okay even in sole proprietorship partnership so many reports would be there but there is no reporting no one is reporting. but when it comes to limited liability company this legal person has a fictitious identity right legal person like you and i but there's no physical substance therefore it has an enormous opportunity to do something whatever they want like managers want by using the resources given to the entity therefore there is a conflict of interest between managers and owners that is the, 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 the uh, need if owner become the manager technically that need may not be there but to comply with the legal requirements still you, the we call reporting but when a company becomes bigger and bigger like a big conglomerate national company uh multinational company ultranational company big monopoly like uh, google amazon and microsoft uh, hmm? uh, apple likewise giants it giants in this world sometimes no one knows who the owners are so called managers a tiny group of people called managers and directors take decisions and deal with huge amount of money then there is a risk from a societal point of view where someone just mentioned accountability point of view good governance point of view of course those who utilize these resources with the enormous amount of power and authority have a responsibility and made that responsibility uh, mandatory in the law of that country to report back to your owners how do you report you do not go and meet your owner separately and tell your owner 
yes, uh, boss, we have earned this much money uh, out of the money given to me. That is, these are the reports. Just look at. If you want, you can take physical physical amount of cash and all. So, so it's not the way. So a standard procedure and the means are used. They are nothing but financial statements. Therefore, the vehicles means of reporting is financial statement, which contains so many reports. Those financial statements are called general purpose financial statements. I hope it's clear to you. Even if you have any more doubt, please ask. Is that clear to everyone? The meaning of reporting? Okay. I hope it's clear. If it's not clear, please ask. So that at the end of this course, you must be able to define financial reporting. You see, now you can take the formal definition of this thing, but here in after, at least you should have a sense of feeling that, ah, financial reporting is something, this is obligatory due to this agency conflicts and agency relationship. Therefore, I just um, report the things in financial terms through financial statement, that's it. Explain the need for reporting. Already I explained to you. It cannot be done voluntarily. If it is given on voluntary basis, managers may do whatever they want. Therefore, it has to be regulated, monitored, governed through independent and external parties. That is how and why companies act and other regulations are in operations and applicable for limited liability companies. Explain various modes of financial reporting. What are the various modes of financial reporting? Different sources, different statements, different statements. Even uh, like um, in, in, within an organization, inside the organization, um, uh, some reporting may take place, may boss may ask you to just prepare something and do something. It's maybe a, 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 like actually it, it, it is not tantamount to a real reporting, but could lead to some kind of just providing information or computation or analysis. So when it comes to the modes of financial reporting, they are none other than financial statements, which comprises six components, which could be done in various forms, maybe in an annual report or because annual report contains so many other information as well, not only the financial statements, right? And maybe quarterly report, monthly, if you want, it depends. Maybe if your entity has been listed on the Columbus Stock Exchange or any other stock exchange, you are supposed to provide quarterly information. Um, likewise, reporting varies. Yeah, someone has just mentioned. Interim financial statements, what we call quarterly means interim. Discuss main aspects of conceptual framework for financial reporting. We will be discussing main, the major aspects. Describe regulatory framework for preparation and presentation of financial statements in Sri Lanka, like regulatory framework, legal uh, um, relevance, that is the act, accounting standard and auditing act, Companies Act and likewise, whatever. There are lots of things. Describe accounting standard setting process. Why? We'll discuss and discuss the importance of ethics in financial reporting. We'll come to that part later on. Ethics is a subject, very important and interesting subject, but unfortunately, ethics are not taught to those who really break ethics. So ethics are taught to innocent people like you, you and I. We, we do not have much exposure. Like we also may engage in unethical conducts. We will discuss these things open later. 
towards the end of this course because the reason why we have talked about ethics and good uh, behavior, um, our action are the things that really determine the shape of the society in which we live in. If you engage in unethical conduct, actually your society is totally unethical. Because you promote wrong things to be done in a society. If the corruption is institutionalized and people ratify that, okay, corruption is all right, so that is a wrongdoing, so then you can't expect a country corruption free. On one hand, you ratify corruption, but on the other hand, you go and cry, oh, I want a country corruption free, no way. Okay, I will discuss a um, little bit about the introduction part of the financial reporting. Now, you should have a good understanding about reporting. So, reporting itself has its own meaning. Financial reporting means in that particular process, what we report, the mandatory requirement is to um, show the things in financial values, nothing else. The explanations that really then support these um, financial values. If there is any other information or disclosures, they also become part and parcel of these annual reports or disclosed of information. It's not mainly connected to the reporting. Reporting is obligatory in connection with the resources given by owners and lenders. That is the uh, the uh, uh, um, primary level, but we know that nowadays um, no organization can simply uh, limit their operations between owners and the entity. When an entity produces goods or manufactures goods and engages in trading, of course, it interacts with many parties society, environment, government agencies, so many things. So therefore, reporting is expanding. It's evolving, in fact. Hmm? And now it has evolved up to a level called integrated reporting. Instead of reporting so many things, at the very beginning, your mandatory requirement is to report financial figures. Later on, it changed increase, many things came in. Now we talk about something called integrated reporting. Integrate everything, report in one source. So it has been simply, so actually the learning is not to buy hard this thing, but to understand what I explained. Try to ask questions from yourself. Why, why? what is the meaning of reporting? What is the big deal of this? Then only you can go and check the agency issue. Then you have, or you will learn something. If you have done it, then you have learned something. If you buy hard this statement and memorize this concept, it is not really learning, but may be helpful for you to get some marks at the examination or wherever you want. It's not the, the ultimate objective of learning, but that will help you to learn more. So it formally tells us activities which are <coughs> sorry, intended to serve informational needs of external users. Why they are external in the limited liability company, owners become external technically, whereby information Asymmetry exists. For example, suppose that if you buy 100 shares of, um, say, commercial bank, you are 
but technically you are an owner. But you can't go to the commercial bank head office and meet the CEO and say that I'm an owner, just give me all these books and I, I want to check whether you are doing the work because we pay you salary and all these things. What will happen? Sometimes you would end up in, I mean, end up in a hospital or maybe somewhere else. Hmm? So maybe in the police a jail, jail room. Hmm? Now you understand, even though you are the legal owner, you become an external party to the entity. So lack of authority to prescribe the financial information they want from the enterprise. Because you don't have authority, what I want. Therefore, must use the information that, are, that the management communicates to them. So you need to depend on management, board of directors, but not only on their own wishes. That is the reason. If we live like this, there would be a big danger. There would be a very big division between managers and owners. That is why county standards come and say, hey, guys, okay, even though you have the authority to do so, don't do so many clumsy things. Please prepare the financial information according to these standards and percentage. So now you can understand the, the depth of the formal modes of financial reporting, general purpose financial statement, quarterly, generally means basically that is annual, sometimes corporate social responsibility. So they are not mandatory, but kind of reporting. You report to different types of stakeholders to show them that how responsible you were during the last year, how much money has been spent for these kind of activities. Just showcase yourself, just to show uh, them that you are a good guy. But sometimes it would be, it would turn to be an advocacy advertising even. But my, my opinion is if you could do something good for the society, if you do something with uh, altruistic mo uh, motive, that is for the common good, for the benefit of the society, do you have to report? Do you have to showcase these things? No. If you are genuine enough, you need not to showcase. But here it has become a practice of showcasing, oh, I'm a good guy. I contributed this much, I donated this much something in the name of CSR. Uh, sustainability reporting, integrated reporting. Then the corporate governance. See, sometimes the governance is a mandatory requirement um, because managers and directors will have some connection, collusions among themselves, they may swindle funds. That's also dangerous. Therefore, information should be um, reported. Then auditors report. Auditors also report to who? To shareholders. About what? About the picture shown by financial statements. But auditor's report is in a way a little bit vague. Why it is vague? Auditors are not in a position to say something concrete, something specific due to the test nature of the task that they do. Even though they are professional, they do a professional job, they are not in a position to do a complete job. That is a test nature. So that they don't want to take unnecessary risk. Then they say that we conducted, we just they explained, conducted the report it at this way. Based on the evidence that we have gathered, in our opinion, opinion, <laughs> not something concrete, financial statements show a true and fair view. How do we specifically pitch on true and fair view? What is meant by true? Truth is always relative. Very difficult to find an absolute truth. So that that is also vague. True and fair. Fair is something again, <laughs> questionable, right? 
Now you understand. Ah, so that is the reason why always auditors can escape from uh, some some kind of like if there are uh, even negligence mistakes. There are some avenues of just taking actions against auditors. But I just told you <laughs> the basic situation. Huh? The management discussion and analysis. Managers also explain what they did and how they carried out things, what performance are there in future, what they are going to do. Prospectus is another kind of reporting. So this is very um, controversial um, report. Um, prospect, uh, prospectus are issued when a company wants to issue shares to general public, either through uh, initial public offering or of a for sale. Prospectus, uh, nowadays you may see lots of prospectus, lots of companies are in the pipeline to be listed on the Columbus Stock Exchange uh, within um, coming months or couple of months time until 31st of March 2022 because some tax uh, benefits have been offered for listing companies. So many companies would come. So prospectus should disclose all this relevant information. There can't be fake information. There was a controversy about the recently published prospectus. I do not know whether you guys noticed it. Is there anyone who um, heard about that uh, controversial or argument about the misinformation contained in a recently published prospectus? What company is that? It was there in the newspapers one or yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Yes, company wanted to go for an IPO and company did so, but there were some controversies, arguments and some parties wanted the Columbus Stock Exchange and Securities um, Exchange Commission to stop or temporarily suspend the that particular IPO. What's that? Do you have any idea? Uh, not laugh gas. Laugh gas has um, another issue because laugh gas is a company which has been already listed, which has been already listed long time. Laugh gas has uh, no intention of issuing more shares, even if they want to go for right issues. Now there is no need for laugh gas to issue a prospectus. So then laugh gas has to um, issue some um, objectives of this thing. But of course, laugh gas has a problem because it has huge amount of debts amounting to 4 billion rupees to public uh, the government banks, Bank of Ceylon and People's Bank. They are trying to escape from these loans uh, by bringing money from the either treasury or maybe EPF or pub from public funds. And so they, they are trying hard through their contacts that, that they have with the government um, and to get their money out because they have invested some money, owners, right? But that money cannot be taken out because there is a huge debt if it is going to be liquidated. Whatever, so there is no resources as of now, no assets. Even the bankers will not be able to get that loan. So they try to find and like escape. Okay, treasury or whoever who comes and buys, then price will go up. Those people can sell their shares and quit. Uh, not prime lands, not Swarnamal. So Swarnamal is an old company. So all those three companies you mentioned have are already listed, Lavcast, Prime Lands, Swarnamala, listed companies. So listed companies are not required to issue prospectus. At the time of listing shares, then only you have to issue uh, prospectus. Yeah, pick me, yes, have, we'll have to issue prospectus. Likewise, maybe you better just keep in touch. You would see uh, how many prospectus would come. So right answer is also there. This controversial prospectus was about expat cartoons, corrugated cartoons company that is a member of the Corrugated Cartoons Association. 
and the chairman or maybe some officials from that association claim and criticize that expect prospectors contain misleading information. They wanted uh, uh, the company to have a quick correction. And meantime, they wanted authorities to um, suspend the IPO. But IPO, I do not know impact like whether it was a deliberate mistake or uh, that mistake was there to mislead general public and take money. We do not know what the reality is, but there was a um, controversy about this misstatement. There was a mistake. Be in touch with what's happened. And press releases, corporate disclosures, and all those things also matter. So a few examples. This is the area content you can see. So many different um, aspects are reported. Auditors also report. So how the audit was conducted, then auditors say conclusion based on the procedures performed as described above. We conclude that information contained the performance specified on page this, 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 derived from the audited financial statement of the company, and these things would show a true and fair view. So we need to check the auditor's report. It will provide. This is something called corporate disclosures, the old one. Um, warrants um, issued by Union Bank of Colombo PLC to uh, Culture Financial Holding um, Limited, uh, giving them the opportunity to buy shares of Union Bank. In fact, um, I can't remember. I did not check what happened. This announced because this is a good information by that time um, to check whether this bank is worth the investment or not. Union Bank has issued uh, unlisted warrants to call. So 218 million, but the price has not been mentioned there. Ah, sorry, at a price of 16 rupees. So this is a good study if someone wants to do. So current market price of the Union Bank share is around 12 rupees. If you can check whether this culture financial holding limited exercise these warrants or not. If they have exercised these warrants, that means the current market price is really underpriced. The 12 rupees is a very good price for you to buy shares of Union Bank if that's the case and if you want to invest. So this is how reported information is used for decision making. So is that clear to you? How the information is used for decision making? If the culture fund holding limited has neglected, no, 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 I don't want. It implies that share is not worth at 16, that's the reason. So therefore, as of now, you better take a contingent situation rather than just simply buy. Uh, this is about um, profits, disclosure of profits from time to time. Um, if you read uh, uh, Daily Financial Times, I recommend you to read the Daily Financial Times, actually, then you would be in touch with what's really happening all goods and bads, and um, what kind of things are happening, all sort of uh, uh, games are also seen. Um, so some of the information may not be uh, available in uh, national um, or other uh, televisions where uh, everyone, is, everyone has the access by and large. So better read these kind of things, that's really good. Uh, this is uh, another uh, um, announcement, a recent one. This was made available yesterday by ACL Plastics. Um, ACL Plastics share price is soaring these days. All of a sudden, they said that there was a mistake in the, finance, the uh, interim financial statements they released for the fourth quarter of uh, the year ending 31st March 2021. Now, could be genuine mistake, 
could be deliberate. So as long as you are allowed to accept your own errors and mistakes and rectify them within a short period of time, if you want, you can deliberately make the mistakes and have the advantage, just show us a picture. Later on, you admit, oh, there was a mistake. Okay, now I correct it. So that is with simply dealing with numbers, if that's the case. So always, as long as we live in a market economy, which promotes and advocates to maximize the individual utility, creates lots of opportunities and suspicion about uh, these kind of um, uh, uh, corruptions or misleading and things susceptible. That is why you need to be a little bit vigilant before taking decisions. Um, so we will stop uh, at that point for today. We'll start the discussion tomorrow, need for regulating financial um, reporting. But if you have any question, we, um, I can spare for another five minutes time to discuss. Yes. Do you have any questions? Yeah, you can unmute your mic and talk. You can ask questions on what I discuss about the subject matter, or um, you can ask about the general information about the course and what you have to do, or if you have any doubt. Do you have it? No? Okay, if you do not have any, uh, yes. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, so what's the uh, sustainability reporting? Is it legally compulsory? Uh, uh, uh. Actually, sustainable reporting is not uh, mandatory in Sri Lanka, but in some other jurisdictions, I do not know, but I have heard that in some jurisdictions, um, sustainable reporting is mandatory, but in Sri Lanka, it is not mandatory by the Companies Act or by the uh, accounting standards. But as a practice, um, uh, you may disclose those things. In a way, uh, sustainable reporting theoretically cannot be made mandatory if you argue why I will explain you why do you incorporate a limited liability company to do some business to do some business how should you do the business according to the rules of the games so in the jurisdictions there are laws rules regulations and all these so you need to respect the law of that country as long as you do the business. For example, you engage in a business of manufacturing something, a new um, medicine for COVID, not dummy company. Huh? So maybe indigenous medicine that could uh, cure the disease or improve the um, immunity level, then you manufacture it. If you do this thing according to the rules and regulation, you um, do it and sell and carry out so, and again, as far as the environment and all those things are concerned, you don't do anything bad. So therefore you need not to worry something else um, as long as you do the things according to uh, uh, the given rules and regulations. Then on that point, you may say that, no, I, I'm not interested uh, in a, uh, sustainable reporting. But to great extent now, lots of pressure is coming from so many different corners or sections of the society, especially 
from the Western countries, European countries, um, on these sustainable issues. Even companies carry out their businesses according to the rules. And so there are many cases they violate, they break laws of the country and uh, engage in um, so many unex, uh, unex, unexpected practices. So the, on one hand, on the one hand, that's there. But on the other hand, it is nowadays inevitable for a corporation or the firm to carry out their businesses without interacting their operations with the environment. For the time being, leave the society for aside a while. Environment is interacted because of your emission, because of your uh, operations, your movement, the carbon emission has become a big issue. What is your carbon footprint? That is being questioned. Those things are, so we, we, we are not, may, may, we may not be family with these things as of now in Sri Lanka because those things um, may be, always we hear about so many dirty things from politicians. As a result, these big issues are not discussed. But in other countries, public discourses about these sustainable issues. If we continue like this, there are, we will have to face lots of negative consequences in terms of uh, environmental issues, global warming. And it, they, those things are simplified and discussed in uh, a, a discipline called climate change issue because of your wrong practices, unethical conduct, um, uh, your operations have contributed to change the climate, which is not going to be um, favorable or helping the mankind to have a good life in the future. Lots of things, natural hazards may come in. So as a result, pressure is there, especially in the European countries, this sustainable reporting is required. Therefore, you need to disclose your footprint, what you have done. To, up, to what extent you have encroached the society, you have used the society, up to what extent you have taken actions uh, to protect the environment, how much resources, so the money that you have put, uh, put up there to uh, uh, resolve these issues. So that, that is the argument. Um, maybe in the future in Sri Lanka also, it could be made compulsory, but as a practice, no matter whether it is compulsory or not, now you know that uh, limited, uh, sorry, companies listed on the Columbus Stock, Stock Exchange, um, they disclose all those things. Of course, why? If you can showcase that you have done something to protect the environment and you have not done any damages to the environment, you would be treated as a good person, good citizen, good corporate citizen. So therefore it is good to um, build your image, then we report. Uh, so, the company which uh, suspended IPO, no, actually the IPO was not suspended. Um, what happened was, that is XPAC, uh, corrugated, uh, corrugated cartoon that the cardboard boxes manufacturing company, uh, a subsidiary or maybe a related company of the Expo group, it is called XPAC, I will type here. expect um, boxes, something like that. Um, they went ahead with the um, IPO, I think, because um, the calling for application was on 22nd of this month. So it has already lapsed. I'm not sure whether there was any suspension, but as, I, as far as I remember, it went ahead. What I referred was, just uh, before one week, that is around 15th October, um, one party, yeah, expect corrugated cartoons, yeah, private limited, yes. Uh, now it's going, it, 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 it wants to go public. Once it is public, it becomes expect uh, corrugated cartoon PLC or whatever they, they, they change the name. Uh, some officials, from the corrugated 
boxers association there is an association um, official from that association made a complaint to the columbus stock exchange and securities exchange commission saying that um, this expect company has given misleading information in the prospectus they have admitted it so therefore it is not ethical for them to go ahead with the ipo which was scheduled on 22nd and please stop it for the time being but as i remember anyway i will check with the securities exchange commission stop it or not uh, on 22nd <coughs> company open the applications and applications were accepted do not know it's a legal process so that is what i mentioned we will find even you guys can find uh, then we can discuss whether it was suspended or not that's it anything else okay um we took a little bit more time okay so someone has mentioned that it was oversubscribed yes possible on 22nd they may have uh, offered uh, some million shares if you apply for many shares it is called oversubscribed if it's oversubscribed then then they stop the application uh, the period that uh, already they closed it but still securities exchange commission and columbus stock exchange can take some action if they want even though they have collected some money no you can't you have misled general public you have misled investors so we'll see whether it was very serious um, mistake or not I'm not sure but good to be vigilant on those things and check the information okay thank you so much it was my great pleasure to have this session and um, to brief you about the course and to talk about the basic background legal and reporting framework tomorrow also i will explain about this thing um, to provide a good uh, basis and the platform for you to learn the rest after that uh, lectures would be shared among ourselves me sadar uh, sadar and professor uh, dayana okay thank you so much have a great day See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye.